Hello everybody. Uh, I'm, it's my turn to present uh, Faro 11, the, uh, what's new in this release. And as, uh, as Hernan said, nobody knows me. I, I have, nevertheless, I came here at different times. I was here in the first small talk in the UBA. And I was here in the first small talks in Quilmes. Uh, and I'm here now, and I have to say that it's very weird to speak in English with when 99% of the people in front speaks not just Spanish, but also my accent. But okay, <laughs> I'm going to try to do my best. In fact, I should have maybe start uh, since it's Steph who presents usually the Faro release. Maybe I should try to to have a French accent, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's kind of hard. In fact, I should say it's, it's kind of hard. It's kind of, but, uh, <laughs> uh, highly, <laughs> but no. So yes, I'm Esteban Lorenzano and I'm, I'm Faro Consortium Engineer since 2012. Before I, I was here working in a lot of things. Uh, I, of course, I work in Smalltalk uh, previously but also in all kinds of languages that you can imagine, even lots that do not exist anymore. Uh, uh, and I'm working on making software since 1993, so yes, I'm already one of those old, old people, all the small talkers <laughs> from before. In fact, I have now white hair. I'm the Charlie del Cejas. <laughs> and, and be color in the in the wings. I, I don't remember the name in English. But okay, so let's go talk about Faro. Faro started as a project with some goals that, of course, they do not change at all. So I'm going to use exactly the same slides that we uh, always use to present what is Faro. Faro uh, has as goals to make uh, an ecosystem where innovations and business bloom and where, uh, which is also a powerful engine to invent your future. We take the declaration of Alan Kay of the, the best way of predict the future is to invent it, and we start to work out from there. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, debate in the small talk community about uh, the one thing that we used to say that uh, Faro is not a small talk. And we say it basically because we want to continue inventi inventing the future and we do not want to be restrained for, for a de an ANSI definition that maybe will not fit uh, what we will do in next years. But uh, for all purposes, Faro is a small talk. It's just a, maybe uh, it will become a weird small talk in the future, but, <laughs> but for now it's still a small talk. Okay? So if we are in agreement with this, Faro is uh, sustained by the Faro Consortium. Faro Consortium is uh, an organization for industries that can uh, put money to pay my salary, for example, and, <laughs> and different things. Uh, they do not decide the, food, the future of Faro. The future of Faro is decided by the community, but they can have some uh, voice to, to help us uh, prioritize some stuff and, and that. If you are a company and you have money, uh, we, we want it. So <laughs> you can join it and, <laughs> and, and we will make very good use of it or the best use that we can for it. Uh, there are also academical members. Uh, in fact, this university is part of those academical members, and also some others from Argentina. Uh, the, the idea is this is the members that are uh, interested in promote and, and, and do research and use FARO for teaching or whatever they want to do in a non-commercial <laughs> way with, uh, with FARO. So, what is Faro? Oh, no. What is Faro? No. There is also the Faro Association. Uh, the Faro Association it, it tries to uh, uh, congregate uh, individual members, where the Faro Consortium is for 
for companies, for enterprises, the FAR Association is for individuals who, wa uh, who wants to uh, collaborate, not just economically, but also in the, in the community in different ways. If you are not and you're interested, uh, there is the link there where you can join. And this year we have a new cool logo that was not, uh, <laughs> the, the, that was not there uh, last year. So now, yes, what is FARO? Because uh, the problem is that everybody believes that uh, sustaining a programming language is just about doing the programming language. And in fact, we have a kind of a list of things which is not very, uh, is, is not complete, but there is a lot of things that it actually means for us doing FARO. Of course, for all small talkers, many of these subjects uh, will be common, but but uh, like for example, all the languages associated that we, that, that, we, uh, that, that we share, but we also keep uh, utilities, libraries, the infrastructure like the Faro launcher, is, uh, which is an external program used to launch Faro. Uh, we keep the bootstrap, which is a way of we build Faro from scratch. We, uh, we keep all the infrastructure related to continuous integration, uh, all the distributions that we make uh, that, that we made for all the platforms, uh, all testing benchmarks to, and, and that requires time. Also we keep some, uh, we keep uh, uh, we take uh, care of keeping uh, different frameworks that uh, that are needed to actually develop applications, like for example drivers for relational databases or uh, for no SQL databases. Recently, I personally I spent a couple of months recreating the Mongo driver, for example, because they was the the one that we were using was obsolete, and now <laughs> and, and it was needed to uh, to make again so every all the stack works continue working. And we do uh, a lot of libraries of gra gra graphics, like we support the Cairo vectorial gra graphics uh, with a library that was developed some years ago, that is Athens. And now we have a replacement, which is Alexandria. I'm going to talk about that later. We have block, which is like a, a vectorial based morphic. Is Of course, it's the same thing that uh, is the same, uh, it's not the same thing that Fink uses for the Glamorous Toolkit, but it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> it's the same, uh, it has the same origin and it has the same uh, 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 design, but we wish we, we depart for different ways for different needs, and this is not all. There is also uh, as the morphic libraries, the spec, which is for creating applications in different backends. So we have morphic, GTK, and uh, there is a new kit in the blog, which is called blog, uh, Toplo. We have support for SDL windows uh, and all the SDL graphics, and we have the Rosal graphics library. Then there is everything that is inside the IDE, which is more or less Tool more to less the same that uh, is present in, in all uh, in all uh, small talks, but we also support uh, uh, FFI and, and different libraries and different uh, C libraries to to be used. And we we work in the VM. We have our own fork of the VM, so uh, we uh, we have to maintain all that. And then we also have all the communication stuff. Communication like uh, uh, writing books, writing book document uh, uh, documentation in general, doing the communi consortium communication organization, and participating also in the acti in activities like this conference. So yes, uh, doing Faro is a lot of work. So uh, and we are not so many people keeping it, and I wanted to share that because then. Sometimes people uh, lose that insight when, when we talk about doing a language. So in this context, with all this, there is a, a real question 
that we we have all the time is how we how we how to manage change because uh, a system like is faro uh, has a a huge uh, entropic coefficient it's very hard to maintain things and then we need to uh, invest con con constantly in testing um, uh, <coughs> Uh, making it more modular, uh, the problem, one of the original today problems with the small talk is that it was, it was very monolithic and then changing one part uh, is very prone to cause ripple effects uh, and we are trying to reduce this and then of course we want to improve the documentation. Uh, so we have developed several uh, uh, tools to to help us in this. For example, we have something that is uh, the automatic deprecation rules, which works in a lot of cases. When when we change something from one version of, of to another, it's very common that we uh, add some meta information that is used to uh, to replace those uses, uh, usages in your code automatically. Then, if you have enough tests that pass that with will cover as you, you run your test in the new version of the image and then you and then everything is up to date automatically of course that do, does not cover the 100 percent of the cases but it covers a lot a lot uh, of things we also backport in, important fixes to the previous versions now we are developing faro 12 so it's faro 10 but we also time to time if the need is Really, if there is a is a, a real need, we can backport to previous versions even than that. Why is just one version and we do not have long-term support on that? Is because we do not have enough capability of doing it. We would love to maintain more time, but we are a small community with that we eh, progress, and we do not have change to that. But there are other kinds of, of changes uh, uh, that are more important than just uh, fixing a bug or uh, or changing a method name, and that is uh, that is language changes. And for that, we we have put in in place since uh, last year uh, what we call the Faro enhancement proposals, which is uh, taking the uh, some process to take decisions. Which is managed for, uh, for uh, by the Faro board members, which is uh, seven members, part of them from the, uh, the community, part of them from the industrial, and part of them from the team that develops uh, uh, the core team. Uh, it is uh, it's inspired on Python enhancement proposals, and the idea is that there is a process, in you know, a process of discussions, where everybody can propose. Uh, additions. For example, right now we are discussing how to add a string interpolation. That's something that is going to be in a future version of Faro. We don't know exactly when and, 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 and we, we don't know yet exactly how because we are discussing it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's how, how we open the, this is how we open the discussion to the community and eventually we will reach a consensus or a, a decision on how to do it. There are other stuff in discussion at the moment. It's slowly uh, gaining ga uh, gaining uh, uh, traction. So I invite you to go and check if you are interested. It's a way where members of the community can uh, take part of the development of Faro without uh, just being restrained to bug fixes or typos or whatever, which is <laughs> uh, the most common way of participating. So. Faro is a stabilization iteration. What that means that there is no breaking changes. Uh, this time we didn't break anything, or we hope not breaking anything, and uh, and it's just uh, uh, consistent different enhancements. There are spec enhancements. I'm going to uh, talk about it later. There are compiler enhancements, virtual machines enhancements, which are indeed a lot, but uh, they are invisible. So most of them. So that should not affect uh, migration efforts or anything. And there is, uh, of course, a lot of tests and fixes. So this was uh, a very large effort. I, there are 
eh, more than mil, eh, mil. <laughs> 1,400. As I say, it's difficult because I know that all of you speak Spanish. But okay, <laughs> 1,400 pull request processes with uh, more than uh, 900 issues processes by 70, more than 70 people. So it's it's great, it's huge, and uh, and <clears throat> we are just going to cover some of them because I know I see Hernan watching his clock. His watch, I know, that I know my time, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I know. So, first, uh, virtual machine and important changes that we introduce uh, permanent space, the concept of permanent space. Why is this? Because we have users that have uh, that use images of more than two gigas, sometimes even more than four gigas. And in, in, in the garbage collection, in those cases, it starts to be very, very slow. And what happens in the, what happens in, in, uh, also in those cases is that most of these code or objects that are stored in the in, in the images are, are immutable, are just for use uh, are just used there uh, in read-only mode. So the, 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 there is no reason to 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 use the garbage collector there. So we. Created Pablo did it. In fact, Pablo Tesona. Uh, we created a way of separating the image in two segments, uh, segment uh, a permanent segment which will be abs exempt of uh, of the garbage collector and the rest. That is a way of doing it, and we choose to do it manually. For using that is possible now, and you have to do something like this. The code there, uh, so everybody need, uh, so everybody knows when developing what is their permanent part of, or not. Uh, we are uh, developing more analysis tools to help you in this decision, but it's, it's, uh, and, it's and it's going to be uh, always a manual process or semi-manual process in the sense that there, there is going to be humans deciding what is going to be moved to the permanent space. The other thing that we do is ephemerons. Ephemerons is all that. Basically, it's a way of finalizing objects. It's a better way than what we had before. We had weak references and some structure made for finalizing, but that was always causing leaks and it was complicated to do. Uh, and finally, we put in practice ephemerons. Yes, ephemerons is there since a lot of time, and it, it was in Faro since Faro 10 uh, also. But in the practice, it was not working. It was not usable. It was not produ uh, production code. For example, all ephemerons were uh, stored uh, in an array. So when you have a, a lot of ephemerons, it was crashing the image uh, all the time. And then there were, there were a lot of problems. OK, I need to speed up. So you believe me, there were, uh, now, it's, uh, now it's functional. We are using it a lot. Uh, but uh, we are still finding some bugs time to time, but it's, it's very reliable at the moment. There is, uh, there is an extensive use of, of this in, in Faro, and I don't know how other small talks behave, but I think this is very particular of all kills. Okay, so other stuff. Uh, we have initial support for single instruction multiple data. We have we have updated all the dependencies and removed a lot of old code there. We, all that uh, increasing the amount of bugs, uh, bug, bugs. That's true. Increasing the amount of bug fixes <laughs> and testing. Uh, 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 notably using also smart fossils and other kind of tests, uh, weird tests that we are using now in it. We also improved a lot how the, the blocks behave in the in the image. For example, we introduced the concept of cons constant blocks, which is the one that you see there, the empty, the zero, nil, and that. They are constants. And then the, there is, uh, uh, we compile it. Uh, we do not, com there is, we could just remove the, the usage of a block there, but uh, that, that would create another other, other problems when debugging or, or other stuff. So we, what we have now is a constant block that behaves almost like a constant, and, and it's very it's very 
fast, for example, the code that you see before is, is three times faster now than, than previously. We prove the, the do it again, because in a moment we lost the reference, the automatic reference on that. The do it was doing a lot of hacks and now we remove that and it behaves like a method, but in a good way. <laughs> I'm trying to go fast because otherwise I will not, I'm not going to finish in time. So if you have some questions later, I will be glad to, to answer. Uh, more, more options of the compilers. We introduced some optimizations that for now are more, are more, more or less in exper experimental. Uh, in Faro 12 is enabled by default and Faro 11 is, is just enabled in some cases. Uh, to do to do different uh, different kinds of optimizations that allow us to to speed up a little bit the the image. Uh, the, the. Then finally, we introduce uh, for real the fluid the, the usage of fluid class builder. This is something that is also in preparation since Faro 9, in fact, which is basically the implementation of a builder pattern to create classes instead of using a collection of methods uh, a family. But we had, on a, on a moment, we had like 50 methods for the different combinations to create a class. And now uh, we, we use that and it's working fine. It's not just a builder pattern because it's also, it has also, a, for security reasons, it has also a special parser when you use it and different stuff. But it's, that is, it's a builder pattern. But it works very nice. <laughs> uh, then we have some enhanced class comments that uh, we had also before. The, the idea is that we use microdown, which is a subset, a superset of of markdown to uh, write class comments, but not also class comments. And now we we use it also for, uh, to to write all the all the external documentation and the books, which give us some interesting capabilities that you will see later. Uh, and you can have also templates to not write everything, for example, to auto-generate the hierarchy or the examples API or different stuff. So uh, this is not part of the image in the, in the, in, at the moment, but it's part of the, the work we are doing. We are working in a, in a different gra graphics stack for different reasons. We have now, we had before Athens, and this is what is now in the in the image. But we are working in Alexandri, which is a successor, which has certain conditions because Athens was kind of a slow. Alexandri the, eh, is more closer to what Cairo expects from 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 you to do when you want to, uh, to speed, and in in top of Alexandria, we are working on our own version of blog, which is 90% the same of uh, that, the, the one that uses GT toolkit, but there are some, some, some differences. And on top of that, we are working also in a different set of widgets, which is called Toplo. I don't know why it is called that, like that, but it's called like that. Uh, and, uh, the idea, eventually, we have this dream of replacing Morphe with something that kind of will kind of work better for our cases. I, I know that Juan will disagree about that, but but <laughs> that's why. <laughs> but <laughs> we have different visions here and it's okay to have different possibilities too. So then spec for those who don't know is uh, 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 for those who do not know Faro is a uh, Framework to build desktop applications, a declarative framework, uh, and it supports multiple backends. Right now, Morphic and GTK, and we are working on Toplo. That's why it is in italics. And, uh, and it's the foundation for Faro tools, for all, fa all Faro tools. And I don't know why it has the images. Uh, there is an image that is not being rendered there, but it uh, doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, and it's, uh, it's the foundation, as I was saying, for all Faro tools, or not right now, but it will be. And, uh, and, and uh, it's, how, it's what we propose to Faro users to build their own desktop applications. 
So what's new? First is stable. The API has not changed. And just we just add a lot of new presenters, which is what we call the top level of it. And a lot of fixes in, in layouts that were not con, uh, particular in, uh, we were having some particularities. And we also have, this is not there, but we also have some uh, GTK specific components too, like for example, bindings with web ki WebKit G GTK or for VTA terminals and different stuff, but that's not possible to simulate in Morphic, but, but we have it them. So Android, with that, you can do something like this. This is a real life thing. It's what I use to control my work. It's a GTD application, for example, that you can see there. And that's made with uh, spec and GTK. And then also that is a note taking that is also made. I use that too. And that's something that is when I have the time to package, it's going to be like the example applications for this, but it's not. For now, this is for showing that we can mix Alexandria or Athens or whatever, or Morphic inside also there and do. That's a procedural generated map because I play with procedural generation with the board. So it's okay. And then the idea, of course, is that all our tools should run, should run there, should run there for uh, in GTK, which will automatically solve uh, the multi-window problems that we have and also the a, a high DPI problem that we have right now because it's going to be rendered there. And it is working. You have there the playground, the inspector, the uh, iceberg. And we can do also some experimental stuff. This is a, a debugger that it is made for debugging the VM and it's using a lot of, and it's creating a lot of inspectors in the small top way so we can inspect what is happening in the VM with that. Sorry for the colors, but it's okay. And that's, for example, an, ex an experimental browser that we, alternative browser that we are trying right now. And then, well, that's uh, as an example. Then there are oh, the migration tools to expect to. We are also working on uh, to be able to replace Morphic or to do whatever or, or to, with GTK or whatever else we do we are, we need to have all the tools in spec. That's not the case because we have a lot of tools. So we migrated, we, uh, we migrated a lot, but there are some remaining, uh, notably Calypso. Calypso is a Morphic uh, tool and it's a re really, really heavy tool, so it's going to take some time. But we are started to work on that, uh, including what we call mini tools, which is different things that are made in space, but we are including it in, in Calypso, so eventually the migration will be easier. So we also work in Dr. Test, which is an alternative to the test runner. This now, this is now usable. And this is interesting. The fact that we now write everything with micro down means that we can have one single place to query all our documentation. And so we are, we are working in this documentation browser, uh, which basically takes different URL, uh, URLs and downloads what you need uh, in the moment you need. And that's included there. And we finally did a uh, Welcome browser, a new welcome browser. This is a secondary effect of the fact that we removed something and then we needed something there. It says Faro 12 there, but because I take the screenshot in Faro 12, but it's in Faro 11. Uh, and I have 20 seconds, so I'm going to accelerate. <laughs> so for the documentation uh, part, I, 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 have to, I want to remember you that we have the Faro MOOC. Small, uh, multi, I don't know the, the acronym, <laughs> but okay, there is uh, a course online that is there. Uh, it's, it's in French with subtitles and it's in, it's in English too with uh, doublage. Uh, doublage, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh, uh, it's there since sometimes, but it's important. And now this is new, there is going to be an advanced design MOOC that you can see there, and it's of course made with Faro, it's 
pese en, en it is to teach advanced de de design this is in english from start so you will see a lot of people with french accent but in, speaking in english uh, uh, and pablo tesone which is also participating to that there are new book, new books one from Faro with style. Faro by example was updated to Faro 9. Yes, that's a little bit old, but uh, is what we can do. And then there is uh, a book on testing. And last but not least, uh, the team where Faro, where the Faro core team uh, develops works or whatever, proposes also to students uh, internships of six months. These are paid. Not the travel, but what you you perceive as more salary there, uh, and PhDs from three years. Well, this is at Lille in France uh, with all of us, which can be or not good, it depends on you. But there is a lot of good beer there, and then that's all. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe it was a 40 minutes talk, but so I, I, I should, I, I needed to, but okay, questions? No questions. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>